Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So, most global equity markets actually come off again uh, overnight. US, not so bad actually, but European uh, equity markets and the US dollar have been hit hard as uh, as bonds sold off as yields began to, to soar last night. Many traders still scratching their heads over exactly what's going on in that instance, but uh, it is uh, making some traders nervous out there and you are beginning to see an unwinding of uh, some longer term positions as well, especially the USD losing ground against sterling, the euro and the Japanese yen, like dollar yen is back down at our famous 119 level. Um, but if you have a look at the uh, US there, a doji formation again on this market, trading between two ranges, 17, well, basically 18,000, trading above both moving averages. You know, indices are not where the action is. Well, US 30 is not where the action is right now. Looking at the UK 100, this looks a little bit uh, more worse for wear. Breaking below 69.06, targeting 67.71, with the MACD crossing the zero line. We are below both moving averages as the SMAs look to be turning towards a death cross. Uh, obviously, just start the session, but we are below 69.06. So this looks a bit top heavy. Arguably, uh, head and shoulders formation. There's your shoulder, your neck, and your other shoulder. A comfortable break below 6906 would be negative from a technical perspective. So, moving on to Japan 225, again bouncing off that uptrend. Um, dollar yen not really aiding Japan 225 too greatly at the moment since the yen is gaining a little bit of momentum, restricting the competitiveness apparently of some of these Japanese equities. Um, trend line still intact though, we've not had a breaking close below that, but we are looking quite close to the 55 period SMA. Other technicals are relatively neutral, sans the MACD that's just about across the zero line, and uh, that's not a great candle formation to have at the bottom of a support level because it's indicative of the fact that there is significant selling pressure that's pushed that down. Moving on to dollar yen, <coughs> dollar yen is actually trading below 119 now, <coughs> and if that continues 117.36, things get a bit more interesting for your for dollar yen. Should the markets now be taking the fact that the U.S. dollar is not going to have a rise in interest rates? We had some data coming out of the U.S. yesterday that was well worse than expected. Your retail sales, for example, was supposed to come in at 0.5%, came in significantly lower. I think that's why you're seeing a lot of the big moves in the bond market as well as people getting to um, price in their uh, potential rate hike not in 2015 at all. Uh, and obviously that's just the, that's the way with the data being so weak that that's uh, not that surprising. And the long dollar uh, bulls are now unwinding their positions and it actually ends up being probably quite good for the US economy not having a strong greenback because it allows them to be more competitive in that sphere. So um, <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised if this is the start of, uh, of, 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 uh, of a couple of months of uh, US dollar weakness coming in, since it's had such a great run. So moving on to West Texas crude, the dollar weakness should be good for commodities longer term uh, to provide them a little bit of support. They have been getting battered about a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, 59.50 is potential support level on uh, West Texas. 64 uh, is long term potential resistance. Credit oil inventories came in quite high yesterday, as ever, but it's not really depressed prices too much. We do have a negative candle yesterday, um, but still looking not so bad. Looking at gold, gold's had a real shot in the arm falling that real bad the uh, retail sales figure in, in the US and the fact that interest rates is probably starting to rise anytime soon. Gold very sensitive to interest rate uh, increases uh, with almost everybody now saying that 2015 is just not going to happen now. So 1218 is potential resistance. It seems to be holding for now, which also coincides with the tip here at the end of uh, April. It does break higher. 1242 longer term potential resistance. Uh, however, we've not really been out of that um, out of this for a month and a half so far. Uh, we've not been above it since February. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But 1218 significant level for gold traders to be aware of. So finishing up with Euro dollar, uh, with Euro dollar uh, and that dollar weakness we've broken above uh, the tip of this candle at 113.80. Uh, we've got to be targeting one spot 16.42 as a longer term potential resistance right now. This is a technical breakout on the chart. Technical indicators are of course massively overbought, so do bear that in mind. Um, but the candle does look particularly bullish in the short term. Finishing up with GBP USD, sterling is on an absolute run right now, uh, and some commentators are looking at the conservative win as 
a longer term play for those that think Britain has a chance of leaving the Euro, which may result okay. in a breakup of the Eurozone in itself because if Britain goes, other countries, richer countries, as in countries in the north of Europe, might also look to uh, shake off the, the weaker countries in, in the south. And they're seeing this as a very strong, sterling positive. Um, should the referendum obviously go in uh, a non-Europe stance and the way that I think the public feels about Europe right now in this country I think if they did have a referendum on Europe a lot of people here don't see a lot of the benefits so I wouldn't be that surprised should a, uh, a referendum happen if uh, Britain does end up leaving Europe which would be very strong for the uh, sterling as people would have to buy up lots more sterling to do business for Britain uh, and that would be a long, long-term uh, sterling positive. Um, and we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But certainly, if you look at the, the performance, there's not, apart from the fact that the Conservative government had taken over, there's not much change in regards to the macro data. So it's not an interest rate move that's driving the sterling. So that is something to think about. So economic data-wise, uh, you do have unemployment claims, PPI, uh, due today. So a, a couple of interesting pieces there. And on Friday, nothing that exciting. You've got consumer sentiment survey, nothing to write home about. And uh, if we actually just fast forward onto next week, Monday, very little. Tuesday, lots of UK data, Eurozone data. Looks like Tuesday is your next big day of macro data events. So keep your eye on the chart form as ever. Make insights part of your life going forward and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.